There is a renewal regarding the display of selection rules. To demonstrate this, I will open the Edge Blend feature. In the top border bar, the selection rules are now no longer listed, but only the selection filters. By the way, the difference between selection rules and filters is quite simple. A filter is always used temporarily. A filter temporarily reduces the possible selection. A selection rule, however, defines how a selected reference will behave in the future. Here, for example, the selection rule feature intersection edges is used. It references all edges that have been created by an intersection. In this case, edges that result from the Boolean operation subtract or unite. After something has changed in my geometry, then the number of edges may also change. Accordingly, the references then update depending on the defined selection rule. As you can see, not only in Edge Blend, but also in other commands, there is a relatively high range of selection rules that we can use to basically stabilize the design. There is one more thing I'd like to show you. You can use the More button to define an angle tolerance. Why is it needed? If you work with the selection rule tangent curves, then every adjacent curve or edge is considered tangential, which lies within the angle tolerance of, in this case, 0.5 degrees. In the past, we had to define the tolerance in advance in the preferences while file preferences. As you can see in Edge Blend, for example, it is possible to define a distance tolerance, but not an angle tolerance. This is now possible via more. Here you can define a tolerance, which will then cause edges to be interpreted as tangent when selected, as long as the defined angle tolerance is not exceeded. In this video, I would like to talk a bit more about selection rules. To do that, let's take a look at this construction. This construction is modular, but what does modular mean? Modular means that feature groups are contained here and the objects within the feature groups are dependent on each other. Here, for example, from this object in the cutout group and from this extrude, there are no references to the rest of the features, at least not to a form feature. A reference to a base coordinate system must be there, of course. In the group ribs, you can see that the extrude and the edge blend also have no reference to this main body. This extract does. Here I created an extract from an extract, then a new extract to create another Boolean operation here. An intersect and a pattern. What is this all about? I don't even want to go into that. Basically, this construction is as modular as possible. But why? Very simple, you can reuse objects relatively easy by copy-paste and by this independence from this group. For example, when intersecting the features, relatively few references are requested. So if you want to copy these objects somewhere else, you use Ctrl C, Ctrl V. Of course, with reference to the complete feature group. Of course, we have to redefine the position for the copied sketch, of course. The extrude must be positioned somewhere, the direction is determined automatically. And of course, we have to select the body which is needed for this extract. Here, the rotation vector is displayed, which is necessary for the pattern. That's all the references. No body edges, no further curves. The construction is modular and independent. This also makes the construction much more stable. You may also notice on this occasion that all details were already created in the first, second and third module within the possibilities. That means edge plans were not created at the end of the construction, but really when it was possible. I would also like to show you why this was done. For this, I will discuss the construction from top to bottom. I'll make the main body the current feature and look at which selection rule was used here. Feature curves. This will always select a complete sketch no matter how this sketch changes. This is already good and I think that all of you can understand that. In the draft feature, very specific selection rules were also used. By the way, the vector refers to a single vector. This vector was positioned on the z-axis of the coordinate system. Why? I deselect the vector for this purpose. Very simple, you can select the vector directly in the part navigator with a left click. The vector should not even be visible. I deselect the vector again with a left click in the free graphics area. One click. 
The vector doesn't have to be visible anymore. This is a unique selection. The vector clearly refers to this draft direction. A stationary phase here, a single phase was chosen. A plane from the coordinate system is used as a reference here. Again, a plane could have been extracted, so to speak, or created individually to make the selection easier. For the selection of the faces to draft, the select remove body faces is used. The complete body is referenced. No matter how many faces the body consists of, all faces are always selected. This makes the draft update stable. I cancel the editing and I look at the next object, namely the edge blend. Here the body edges selection rule is used. All body edges are filleted. And then body edges are deleted again using the delete face command. Synchronous modeling is used wisely in this case to stabilize the design, not to correct the design. What is the strategy? I'm just gonna deselect the selection. We'll take a look at the selection rule that is used. Adjacent faces. This face has been referenced, and so is this face. This selection rule is used to create a reference to the object that was selected. If I select this top face, then I have created a reference to this face from the extrude in that case. The opposite side corresponds to the bottom of the extrude. This is clear. The extrude has only one top and one bottom. The only thing I can change is the cross section. For example, if we create five curves or six curves in the sketch, the curves are automatically used for the extrude because the feature curve selection rule is used. With the adjacent faces rule, all adjacent faces of the selected objects, in this case top or bottom of the extrude, will always be selected. It doesn't matter what changes on the cross section. The selection will update automatically after a change. The concatenation of the selection rules, body edges and adjacent faces corresponds to the following unique condition. All except. All body edges except the body edges are filleted, which are adjacent to the top side or bottom side. And if I now increase the number of curves in the cross section, for example, based on a user expression, all side faces will still be filleted. In the next design step, I even rounded the adjacent edges of the top side again. This selection is changed stable by using the selection rule face edges or outer edges of faces. Both rules work the same with the reference to only one face. All edges are selected, which are adjacent to a selected face, in this case, the top of the extrude. The selection is unique and the selection of edges of the selected face is automatically updated after a change. The body constructed up to this timestamp has been extracted with all details once, so to speak a copy has been created. Then the wall thickness was created with the shell feature. I will show you in a moment why this copy is needed. In this shell feature, a unique and change stable link was also created. By using the selection rule single face or tangent face, a reference to the bottom of the extrude was created. The selected face itself does not change, that's why the shell remains stable. Is the reference to a single face in the shell feature in general unproblematic? No, the cross section of the extrude could also lie in this plane and thus be extruded laterally. Then this side would correspond to the bottom of the extrude, which then results from a curve from the cross section. This curve from the cross section can change. Therefore, when you create products that have a wall thickness, you can think about how the construction should be reasonably built. On which datum coordinate system must the sketch be positioned? In which direction must the extrude point so that the construction remains as change as stable as possible? The first base object is completely constructed. No further details can be constructed. The related features of the base objects are part of a feature group. In a further feature group there is another extrude. This extrude also contains internal drafts. Then you see here an edge blend. Here too the complete body was rounded. I'll open the edge blend. Here above is body edges. The display selection rule after opening an existing feature is an indication of which selection rule is being used. However, the display rule does not prove that the body edges selection rule is actually being used here. Because theoretically several different selection rules can be used in a feature and refer to different objects. Let me show you. 
With the right mouse button on the selection, by the way, this also works. Right mouse button on the selection. Now you will see the selection rule that refers to the selected curve. This edge is selected by using the body edges selection rule. The body edges selection rule is applied by selecting any edge of a body and always refers to the body and not a specific edge. By the way, you could switch the selection rule with a right click. Now the single curve selection rule applies to this edge. After a right click, the used rule single curve is displayed. Now I select another curve and change the selection rule to connected curves. The rule has no effect on further curves. However, the selection rule is different for this curve than for this one. I will deselect the curves again with the left click in the free graphics area and use the selection rule body edges. I define the selection rule without rearranging in this drop down. I make a left click on the curves and with the right click body edges I change the selection rule. Still I'm gonna cancel the command because everything has been defined already. Here a copy was created from a copy from this first main body. The rib is still relatively large at this point. I'll hide this body for a moment. You can see that the copy has no wall thickness because it was originally made before the shell feature. The extracted body is used to create an intersection body. This is used to trim the rib. If I now show the original object, the main body, you will see that the bodies only need to be unified. Before the unite, a pattern was created here, from this rib. In the next step, the bodies were united. However, the unite feature is not part of the feature group. The unite refers to the bodies of two feature groups and the group remains independent as long as the unite is positioned underneath. The feature groups are intended to be independent. The positioning of the Unite signals and ensures that. I edit the Unite feature and take a look at the selection rules. For the first object, the selection rule single body is used, which is stable and unambiguous, because only one body can be selected as a target at a time. The oldest possible object should always be selected as the target of the Bolin operation. Of course, it would also be possible that you also select one of these bodies as a target. The result looks the same at first, but reacts differently when modifying your construction. Think about it. For a Unite feature, you select a target and several tools, which are united to an object. The result is not a new body, but remains the body that was selected as the target. It stays and all other objects are merged with this body. What exactly happens in a Boolean operation can be seen if we assign different colors to the bodies beforehand. I will color the bodies with the Edit Object Display tool. However, I have to color the bodies before unifying them. To do this, I activate the feature group main body, I select the body, I start edit object display and select the green color. And now you see that the result after unite is green as well. However, if you deselect or replace objects in the unite feature and use a new body as a target and define the remaining bodies as a tool, then you can already see in the preview how the color of the result will change. The color of the body that was selected as a target will be taken over by the result of the Unite. As you can imagine, in model history often several Boolean operations, several Unites are created. There are many types of Boolean operations, not only those related to solid bodies. There's also a patch feature, suit, trim and extend, etc. The face plant is also a Boolean operation. If you use a relatively large number of these for the construction and the so-called body ID changes each time, for example, the result gets a new color each time, then you always have to expect a chain reaction when you make a change. And you can imagine not a single error should happen. On the other hand, you should always select the oldest object first, which in this case corresponds to the main body. And you see the result is green. With every detail, with every module you create, the target in the Boolean operation always refers to the main body and the result is always green. Thus, the modules are independent of each other. Think about it. This procedure is called horizontal modeling. It reduces the calculation time and the error proneness of the construction. 
By the way, if you define the Boolean operation internally, for example in the extrude, then NX automatically selects the older object, in that case the main body as a target, and inherits the ID from this older object to the result. By the way, you can also check the ID. You are very welcome to do that on this exercise part. Therefore, I select the body. Control and I object information, here the ID is displayed. If you check this after each Boolean operation, this ID should always be the same. The color also refers to the ID, so the color is an indicator that the ID is passed to the result after each Boolean operation, namely the ID from the target. Here a cutout was constructed and subtracted. Also here you can see this is the third module cutout and the boolean operation is below the feature group. And last but not least a final detail was created, in this case an edge blend, using the feature intersection edges selection rule. I hope you enjoy reviewing this component. You can adjust the cross section of the sketch to three or five sides without any problems and you will see the only message that is displayed here right now is that the number of bodies which are combined has changed. At this part the change of the number of bodies which are united here has of course no negative effect, but this can be the case and that is why this warning makes sense. There is a possibility to hide the warning. The setting can be found here above, right mouse button, clear warning alert. You can also explicitly hide the warning, that's how I used to do it, with a double click on the Unite. The Unite will be recalculated and updated when editing, thus deleting old references. This will then also remove the warning. By editing you are signaling to the system, so to speak, that you are aware of this change in the number of bodies. With a double click on the Unite. Why is it not so good if you always remove warnings or informations with this? Because useful warnings can also support you, are simply removed and you possibly miss something.